Hey, welcome to Gold Scratch. So, uh, based on the feedback I've been getting, by the way, we're not in Gold Scratch today, we're in the office, so uh, it's convenient to make this video. Um, based on feedback I'm getting from subscribers, there's a need for more information or practical explanation of some concepts that are not widely understood in a way that they can be understood. You don't have to be a math genius in order to uh, to deal with some of these issues. And if you're planning a build, uh, a build is really a combination of parts, camshafts, compression, pistons, all that stuff. And those parts have to go together in order to get uh, a desirable result. So you need to understand this stuff before you start even buying parts. So this, well, this discussion is about dynamic compression and I did talk about it in a previous video and uh, I did describe it and I described how you can calculate your own static compression ratio and then I said uh, dynamic is pretty complicated go online find a formula fill in the numbers and you'll get an answer so and you will but it's always better if you understand it so I've come up with kind of an example that I hope will help people understand it uh, without doing a lot of complicated math so once again Let's take an example of an engine that has a 10 to 1 compression ratio and a 4 inch stroke, just to make all the math nice and easy. So, right off, first of all, let's cover this off, 10 to 1 compression ratio, the volume of the cylinder, the chamber, and the pistons at the bottom of the chamber before the stroke starts to go up is 10 times more than the volume of the pistons at top dead center. And I already described how you can calculate that. Dynamic compression, on the other hand, is a little more complicated. So, uh, you can fill in the formula, but here's a way to understand it. Let's take an assumption you back to our 4-inch stroke, and let's assume that the intake valve closes uh, when the piston is 1 inch from the bottom of the bottom dead center. So, out of the 4 inches, uh, the, the mixture is only being compressed three of the four inches instead of four. So if you have a 10 to one static compression ratio and you're only compressing the mixture three out of the four inches, then you have a 7.5 to one uh, dynamic compression ratio. It's really that simple. And if you're degreeing a camshaft and you've located the intake center line, uh, this camshaft uh, sample I used here, uh, is the comp cams 276, that I used in the 427 that I built last summer. Uh, the intake valve closes 64 degrees after bottom bed center. And you could actually find your center line of your intake 160 degrees, rotate around to 64 degrees after bottom bed center, and actually measure from the top of the block down to the top of the piston. And you will have your dynamic compression, uh, the amount of stroke that's left in your dynamic compression. So you take that, let's say it's three out of the four inches, once again, 75%. So that's a quick way to understand dynamic compression and it's really important and I will cover off uh, in future videos, hopefully in a simplified way, uh, why that's important and why you need to understand it and how, what you can do to change it. And you can change it by retarding and advancing your cam and what conditions you do that. So. Hope you found that interesting. I will actually leave my email address in the description. And if anyone has any questions, uh, feel free to contact me. Uh, look forward to your comments uh, and, and questions and likes, of course. And uh, always looking for new subscribers. So if you want to hear more information like this, uh, please uh, click the subscribe button. And thank you for watching Gold Scratch.